Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A very good morning to all of you. Good morning, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When my brother was talking about forgiveness, have you heard the word snare before? Yes. What's a snare? Animal trap. Animal trap. Okay. When a snare is laid, does the uh, prey knows that it's a trap? No. No. Because if it knew, it would never get involved in that snare. So unforgiveness is a snare of the devil. Mm. Uh, do you have mouse traps here? Yes. yes. In Australia? Yes. Yes. There are mouse? Yes. yes. Even worse than rats, brother. Anybody from India? Uh, we have mouse traps, okay, where the door is open and there's a latch over there on the door which has got a spring action and a bait is put. The rat comes, looks at the bait, as long as he's looking, it's going in and out, the trap has no power. But the moment he opens his mouth to take it, the latch goes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the door shuts and now is inside the trap. And what do we do in India when a rat gets into the trap? Do you know? Okay. I'll give you different ways. Some of them will take hot water and dip the trap and the mouse inside the hot water. So it's not getting drowned only, but it's getting boiled as well. How they boil chicken? They boil the rat. Together, one thing is suffocated, second thing the heat as well. It doesn't happen in Uganda, right? No, no praise God. They are very compassionate people. In India, we are ruthless, praise God. Second, what's the next way of killing the rat? Pouring boiling water. Okay, this is the slow death. <laughs> okay, third. <coughs> well, we had a door yeah, you take a hammer and hit him. Oh, the hammer won't go in. Or you open the door and then hit. <laughs> ah, then, then he will, he'll be out of the trap. The another one is keeping the sack open and opening the latch so that he runs into the sack mm. and then you would hold it. One, two, three. And if you are more adventurous, you bring a cat and keep it before the trap and you open the trap. But one thing is sure, he will surely die. And that is what God wants to tell us. Unforgiveness is my decision to get into the snare of the devil. The rat can come and sit on top of the trap. Nothing happens. But the moment he gets involved with it, he is in trouble. In the same way, situations will come against you. And when they come against you, no problem. <clears throat> but the moment you get involved with it, by responding, by a, a good word would be by reaction. So I did, sorry, just an example. Gavin, you are set free. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> can I? If I do this to you, you can do it with two hands, the same. That would be action, the same action in multiplication is called re. Action. Action. So we Christians are not supposed to react, but we are supposed to act. Amen? And we are supposed to act as Jesus acted. Yeah. So let me show you a scripture where the Lord is speaking about forgiveness and he's speaking in one sentence so many times, in one just one scripture, so many times the word forgive is repeated. It is from 
uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. Two Corinthians chapter two verse ten. No, that's Colossians. I just said uh, type the number two. You'll get there. Keep typing the number two. No, 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 we want to go back. Click on the box again. The box. <coughs> go down, go down, go down. Down, down. There you get it. Two. Okay, yeah. thanks, Baba. You got it? Shall we read it? Yes. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it, for your sake forgive I it in the person of Christ. Lest, lest Satan should take an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, there was a situation in Korean that a person had a very sinful sexual life, and because of which they had. Uh, you know, rejected this person. Uh, they had condemned this person. And then the Lord said that it's good to do that, but not to keep that same attitude. But there comes a time when you need to release that person. Okay? Because if you don't release that person, then you will find yourself yourself in the trap praise god praise god praise so he god. says to whom you forgive anything i forgive also so forgiveness is the first day we learned is forgiveness is when a person forgives he is the person who is saying, I am willing to pay the price that you owe me and I am ready to pay off your debts. You remember about the king who found the servant who owed 10,000 talents? Mm. The king not only forgave him but cancelled his debt. debts. So who paid the debts? The king. So who, who is the one who pays the debts? The one who is hurt. He pays the debts of the person who is hurting him. So isn't it that forgiveness looks to be extremely unfair? Mm. The fair would be, this person has damaged my dignity, this person has uh, spoiled my health, this person has got me into depression, this person has uh, made so many losses for me, he has to compensate, right? Yes. But when forgiveness comes you are saying you don't need to compensate me for anything i let you go free that's called forgiveness and if this was not so then jesus could have never been able to say father forgive them for they know not what they are doing he could say that only because Jesus was paying the price of all those things that we did against him. If he was not willing to pay the price, he cannot forgive us. So forgiveness is always action. And in that action, 
there has to be the person who forgives who pays the price praise god so it's not just a verbal sentence saying uh, oh, oh i I'm, I'm so uh, okay i let you go forgive i forgive you no 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 there's a price to be paid and the price has to be paid with one's free choice and that's what he says because if you don't forgive look at the 11th verse lest satan should get an advantage of us you won't even know when satan has arrested you when satan has made you his prisoner let me give you an example so that you understand what i'm talking about was Saul the king in the old testament anointed by god yes yes did god give him victories yes yes because of the anointing because of the anointing wherever Saul went was the lord with him yes come on yes yes and uh, there's something that happened let me get that okay let me show you how many of you believe that god is a powerful god some of them their hands went slow so her hand went straight like this like a like a bullet coming out of a barrel okay do you believe yes do you believe he is a sovereign god and he controls all things yes, yes. do you believe everything happens to you according to his will yes, yes. that's where you went wrong no. now i'm going to show you something <coughs> and what did unforgiveness do my brother anthony you cannot leave my brother anthony you cannot leave i need you he's making the place warm he's making the place warm yes it's cold yes sir only on the game once samuel 13 you can't leave you can't leave you are stuck to your place and he was saying uh, he has come from a uh, which which place sir port 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 headland That's okay. okay, somewhere on the top. Yes. Yeah. But from Australia only. Yes. Australia. They're not very far from here. Yes. Oh, yes, yes it is. Just 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 uh, 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 okay. half an hour drive. No. No. About a three hour flight. How many? Three hour flight. Three hour flight. Yeah. On a plane. Isn't this man crazy to travel all that distance and just to operate the computer? He's dedicated. might be the wife who is watching now will be saying oh my god my husband went for the retreat and there he ends up operating the computer praise god okay okay one samuel 138 and now i'm here to show you what can unforgiveness do and 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 as as you as i told you unforgiveness is a snare of the devil Now please understand a snare is a trap where the person does not know it's a trap but the moment he gets involved he is he is he is he is a prisoner are you ready yes now many of us think that everything happens according to god's will now please understand god has given to man the freedom to choose and even though god has got great plans for us those plans will never ever come to pass until i cooperate with him mhm 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 yes mhm mm. <laughs> praise god okay here we go are we ready one samuel
Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I come? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's read it together. And Samuel tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. And the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring here a burnt offering to me and peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. But Samuel said, What have you done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that you come not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmach. Therefore I said, The Philistines shall come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I, 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 I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord, thy God, which he commanded you. Now watch this. Now watch this. For now, for now, would the Lord have established your kingdom upon Israel forever. But now, your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has set him a man after his own heart. And the Lord commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept which the Lord commanded you. Watch that verse number 13 again. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done was Samuel's action foolish? Mm -hmm. What was Samuel's action foolish? Was he offering the burnt offering? Was he making supplication? So what was foolish? He didn't obey. No. What command he did not obey? Because he was told not to offer the sacrifice to the Because he is the king, not a priest. He took the office of a priest and did what the priest is supposed to do. And the Lord said, you have disobeyed me. Now, now, supposing you are God, supposing you are God. <coughs> so offered a sacrifice, which he is not supposed to do, but a priest is supposed to do. That's his sin. On the other side, David has a sin of adultery with a woman. Now, as God, which one would you punish? <coughs> which one, according to you, would be more severe? Everything is against God, but as which one is more, more? The way of disobedience. He wanted to offer a sacrifice to God. Samuel did not turn up. He offered the sacrifice. Okay. But what about David? He not only had a physical relationship with the woman, he killed a husband as well. And then he got married to her. Now, which one would be more sinful? What Saul did or what David did? David did. 
Sorry. Sorry. Why do you say it's wrong? Because God had, God had a command, had commanded or anointed or whatever, had, had, had put a priest in place to do a specific job for a specific job. Okay, if that was so, did David get forgiven? For, for his sin? Yes, yes. Did Saul get forgiven? You know, you know, when you, it, it just, just watch that again. You have done foolishly, you have not kept the commandment of the Lord, the God, which he commanded you. For now would the Lord have established your kingdom upon Israel forever. So what was God's plan? David or Saul? Saul. 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 Was David on the line? No. no. So the kingdom would be <coughs> from the lineage of Saul and that was forever. Now that was God's will. But did it happen? No. Why not? Because Saul did something that God's plan and purpose had to be changed because of Saul's action. In the same way, has Jesus died for us? Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm. Does he have great plans for us? Yeah. Yes. yes. Has he blessed us? Yes. Yes. Has he given us all the promises? Yes. So, you mean to say all those things will come to pass? Yes. yes. No, they won't. They won't. Because please understand the system. When somebody comes to the door, when you walked in, did you touch the door or the door opened? The door It's automatic. Automatic. Praise God. But if that system doesn't work, will it get jammed? Yes. Mm. yes. In the same way, when you are in line with the word of God, every access to the throne of God opens automatically. But when you want to do your own will and not what God's will says, for example, one of the powerful tools of the, of the devil, the snare of the devil is unforgiveness and bitterness. So when a person is bitter or having unforgiveness, uh, will any of the excess doors of the throne of God no. open up? No. It, it will say password uh, excess denied. 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 Still denied. Hallelujah. 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 Now why did David get forgiven and Saul did not get forgiven? The reason is when Saul said, uh, when Samuel said, you have done foolishly, Saul could have quickly said, yes, I have done foolishly, I repent. But Saul was a man who always justified his actions. He always gave excuses. He did not take responsibility of his action. But he said, do you know why I did? Because Samuel, came, you came late. You know why I did? Because the people were looking at that the Philistines would come. And before they could come, I wanted to offer a sacrifice. There was always justification. But when the same Samuel went and spoke to David of his sin. At once. He repented. repented. Was he the was he the prophet Nathan? Nathan. Yeah. The prophet Nathan. When he went and spoke to David, did he did he give any excuse? No. no. He quickly repented. And that's what God wants us to do. Do not give excuses when you when, when the Lord speaks about forgiveness, you will say, But Lord, you don't know what they did to me. <laughs> it's easy for you, preacher, to speak. You have you been in my place? You would have killed him. I thank God I did not kill him. <coughs> Hello? Yeah. And that's why did it cost Saul the kingdom? Yes. Yes. So did Saul's action affect his generation? Yes. Now the anointing, now remember in the Old Testament the Spirit of God would come upon a person and then even leave that person. In the New Testament, does the Holy Spirit come and go? No. 
Why the difference? Because that was old and this is new. New covenant. Why the difference? The Bible says the Holy Spirit would come upon the person, but in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit does not come upon a person. The Holy Spirit comes inside the person's spirit and they become one. Why the difference? Because in the Old Testament, the sin nature is still present in the spirit. Whereas in the New Testament, the sin nature has been nailed on the cross and the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from every sin. And the Holy Spirit who is holy is now entering into the spirit of a man because the sin has been dealt with and therefore the spirit comes in to stay forever. Is that clear? Hello, is that clear? Now, now, now. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon a person, not enter in, because the sin nature was there. Sin was not forgiven. The sin was only covered. The blood of the Lamb covered the sin for one year. Have you ever been for a buffet? Yes. Uh, is, it, is it beautiful when they set up the tables? Sometimes. Yeah. And if you uh, take off the cloth and look at the condition of the table, See, see, when they put that covering, it looks so decorative. But supposing you take off the cloth and you look at the condition underneath the cloth. And if you are from India, <laughs> now, now those who are from India, they know, they know what I'm talking about. Anthony, yes. you're from India? Yes. Yes. Uh, have you seen in Goa the tables? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the condition? <laughs> That's why you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, 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 please understand. That is the condition of man. So, the blood of the animal just covered the sin, but not erased the sin. But the blood of Jesus completely erases, wipes out. Praise God. Deletes that there is no trace of sin. And therefore the Holy Spirit is able now to come into the person and Jesus said when the Spirit of Truth will come, He will come in to stay with you for, for, Ever. for, Ever. whereas in the Old Testament the Holy Ghost would come and go and the person would not even know when he left him. <laughs> That's what happened to Samson. He never knew. He thought the Holy Ghost is still on him. And when he went into the battle, he found the spirit had left it. Last night we saw amazing things, right? Yes. Now, was Holy Spirit in action? Yes. 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 So the same Holy Ghost is in action when I submit to Him, when I when I'm led by His voice. Praise God. Now, Saul got rejected. David became the candidate and God anointed David and told him through prophet Samuel, you would be the king of Israel. Oh, praise God. So now, did his brothers love him? Now, David was a man that not only his brothers, even his father rejected him. How do you feel when the prophet Samuel is coming to your house? To select one of the brothers to be the king and the father sends David to the field. And he knows at home the prophet is going to come and select one of his brothers and his father has rejected him and said you are not qualified. Go and look after the sheep. Go, go. Hadix, 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 Hadix. You know what's that? Huh? Because your sheep are day and night in the field with green pastures. Mm. Our sheep have to go from this side to that side and the shepherd keeps on doing this. Hadix, 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 Hadix. So the sheep can hear that voice. So those who are from India, they understood what I'm talking about. We used to, we used to send the dog. Hmm? Used you always send the dog. And, and I, I've seen that. 
in Ireland. One dog can get 300, 400 sheep right to the place. I, every time I go to Ireland, I know a man who trains dogs and I will always go to watch his dogs. And, I, I, and I'll tell him, brother, can you get all the sheep to this corner? All the sheep he'll bring to this corner. Then I'll say, brother, let's play football now. They are all in the circle, right in the center. I want you to divide them 50-50. He said, no problem. The dog goes on circling. They are all there. He goes right at the end and goes charging at a high speed, straight between them. And they park. And then he takes this one, that one there. So I said, what if all the sheep get together and they, as he's coming, they are ready. They are in such large numbers. He says, it's not about the dog. It's not about the dog. It's about his eyes. Mm. His eyes have tremendous anger. And when they look at that eye, they say he's in business. He means business. Don't mess with him. And that's the time they go. A dog can be extremely tame, extremely obedient, but if he doesn't have that anger in his eye, the sheep can come against him. So when you choose the puppy, it's very important that there should be that fire in his eyes. Hallelujah. And that's why the Holy Ghost in you brings the fire in your eyes, the fire in your mouth, that when you speak the word, the demons understand, don't mess with him. <laughs> it's the same. Last night we saw so many things going out. Praise God. Okay. So now David is in charge. Now David the shepherd boy has gone. Uh, how many of you want to be anointed with the Holy Ghost? Come on. Okay. Okay. Now remember when Samuel anointed David with the Holy Ghost. What was the next thing that happened to David? When Saul was anointed with the Holy Ghost, what was the next thing that happened to Saul? Ah, you are only looking at that part. <laughs> David was introduced to Goliath. See my friend, when the Holy Ghost comes on you, you will be introduced to your Goliath. For what? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is given to you to go into war. Now anybody wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Yes. <laughs> to go and meet your Goliath? Yes. Come on. Yes. Now did anybody know David before he went for a fight? No. no. But the moment he killed Goliath, did the whole country know who is David? Yes. yes. So what does that mean? The size of your enemy decides the size of your reward. If you are fighting small battles, the reward is small. You fight big battles, you fight big battles, the reward is great. The reward is great. Praise God. <coughs> now, did David fight the battle? Yes. Now, do you know the devil nearly cornered David and David would have lost the battle? Let me show you. The devil was deceiving, was, was, was actually deceiving. One Samuel seventeen, brother. One Samuel seventeen was number twenty-eight. Hallelujah. Now, now, watch the trap of the devil. Are you ready? Yes. I, I want you to read the trap of the devil. Uh, David would have surely lost the badge if he would have got into this trap. Look at verse number 28. One second. You have to go up now. Watch that. One, 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 one second. 17. 
verse 28. Hallelujah. Shall we begin? Yeah. And Eliab, his elder brother, heard when he spoke unto the men. What was what was David saying? Okay, let, let's start with 26 so that you will know. So that you will know. Okay. Let's start with 26. Just five minutes. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? And who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that kills him. Now, was David asking these questions over and over again? Yes. Was he asking the, the, the soldiers there? Yes. Yeah. Was David's brothers in the army? Was David a soldier? No. no. He was a shepherd boy. Now as he was asking this question, praise God, his elder brother, the eldest one, Eliab, heard when he spoke unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. Why was Eliab angry with David? Because he was not anointed. Because he was not anointed? Hey. Oh, he was young. He was younger, that's why he's angry. So all the elders are angry with the younger ones. I'm the youngest. Might be you're the eldest. <laughs> Come on, why was he angry? He was just a shepherd and he was questioned. Now, now who is supposed to get into the fight? David or Elia? But was he doing his job? Hello, was he doing the job? No. no. But what was David planning? To get into the fight. When a person sees another person doing things what he is supposed to do, there comes jealousy, there comes bitterness, and there comes anger. anger. And now Elia is angry with David. And see what he says. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why have you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? Now, is Eliab saying to David, Hey, come on, you are a shepherd boy, go and mind your own business. Yeah. Hey, mind your own business, this is my business. Yeah. You, where, where are the sheep? Where, whom have you left the sheep with? When we look at people, do we look at people with their identity of their work? I am a soldier. You are only looking after sheep. Do you understand what is my business? Go and mind your own business. Was he angry? Yes. Was he, <coughs> was he responsible to get into the fight? Yeah. Was he going for the fight? No, he had chickened out. But what about David? He looks to be a chicken, but his heart is strong. And when he's on the job of the person who is supposed to carry out, if I'm not doing, I will see to it that you also don't do. And if you're leaving me and going ahead, I know how to catch you and bring you back. Now, was the snare laid for David? Come on, for no reason there is an accusation. Is that a snare of the devil? Yes. Now listen to how David got out of the trap. And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart. For you have come down that you might see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Why are you accusing me? Have I done anything wrong? And David fought with his brother. Look at the verse 30. And David fought with his brother. And they both went into physical wrestling. 
till Eliab got beaten up because of the Holy Ghost on David. What does it say? Look at the verse 30. They went into physical wrestling. David, anointed by the Holy Spirit, punched Eliab. Even though he was a soldier, his nose was bleeding and he fell down on the ground and began to say, Please forgive me. Well, it tell me what should have been what should have been there. Was David getting into an argument? No. Whenever there's a false accusation, do we want to argue and prove that I am right? Yes. Yeah, but David is saying, hey, hey, the, hey, you, the devil, you are using my brother to get me into the trap. I'm not interested. David turned from him. He's still arguing, yeah, 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 and David. <laughs> Have you got some people coming into your life who are, nah, 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 and you as well, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Anybody married? <laughs> Hello. Married people, is there something not a cause, and there's an argument for small thing? For example, the newspaper should have been under that and the newspaper was there. <laughs> Hello. Some of them are looking at me and smiling and some of them blushing <laughs> when I spoke about the newspaper. The socks. It should have been in the shoe. And it's somewhere else. Hello. I'm not saying anything. I'm just <coughs> doing like this. And people who are looking at me are saying, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For a small silly thing, is there a cause of a big argument? Yeah. Sometimes a small spark is enough. I, I, I know a person who got separated only because the person opened the window. <laughs> the person opened the window and the mother-in-law came and said, why did you open the window? And the daughter-in-law said, we are in this room, will a thief come and steal anything? That's all. And the mother-in-law walked out because she felt insulted. And when she walked out of the room and she just took a turn, the son came at the right time and he said, Hi, Mom. So what happened, Mom? Go and ask your wife what happened. Now what will the husband do? <laughs> Hello, what do you think the husband will do? He goes and does not even ask his wife. He fires his wife. What did you tell my mom? <laughs> The fight happened after lunch and it went up to midnight. <laughs> and the end statement was, I don't need you. I am working, I got a good salary, I can look after my children. I don't need you anymore. You be with your mom. I am going home. Can there be a small spark? So, so in our life, there are snares. Yes. And the same person, when I spoke to that person and I said, you got extreme anger. And the person said, no, I don't have anger. I said, you got. She said, you don't know my anger. Now I'm very calm. I said, now you're calm. That's not calm. That's anger. She said, no, I had super anger, but now I'm calm. Contradictory, sir. She was driving the car and I said to her, you won't get blessed. So she stopped the car at the side and I thought she will open the door and tell me, get out. <laughs> and she looked into my eyes and she said, what did you say? I said, for what 
anger you have, you can't get blessed because you are in the trap. And she looked into my eyes and said, Preacher, it's good for you. Can you tell me how to get rid of it? I said, it's very easy. She said, what? I said, first thing, stop praying. She said, what? I said, stop praying. Because you're praying too much. Now I want to give you a homework. I like the way you looked at me. <laughs> when I said, you're praying too much, she's looking at me. What is he talking? Let me go home. My son is already saying, come on, mom, let's go. <laughs> now I've got an excuse. Praise God. Okay, listen. I said, if you can say to yourself, a scripture which says, I overcome every evil with good. If you can say that, the next time any evil comes, you will not react, but you will act and overcome that evil with good. And she said, okay, I will do that. So the whole day I'm going to say this. I said, yeah, yeah the anger will be gone. And I said, I'll call you after 15 days. So after 15 days, I called her and she said, listen, I have not achieved the target, but, but I want to tell you, I have won 85 percentage, 15 percent I lost. But let's make a deal after three months. So three months she stuck to that one scripture. Then I asked her, how much is the ratio? She said, don't ask me, go and ask my husband. Because if you ask me, I might give good scoring. But if you ask my husband, he will be the right person to give you the, the scores. And I went and asked her husband, I said, uh, what's the score, brother? She, he said, I've been married for so many years. I've never met a woman that I've got married with. She is entirely different. And then she said, I'm going back to India, but this time I'm going straight to my mother-in-law's house. And when I'm coming back, I guarantee you, I'm bringing my trophy of victory. No more trap, no more snare. I'm going to win this time. I'm going prepared. I am going prepared. I am going prepared. And by the time she came back, she said, by the time I was leaving, the father-in-law, the mother-in-law hugged me and said, you are no longer a daughter-in-law. You are a daughter. And she said, that one scripture changed my whole attitude. They could see extreme love. They could see extreme death to self when she made up her mind that this is what i'm going to do and i'm i've made up my mind no matter how much the snare is i shall overcome every evil that is coming against me with good the same person and today the same person runs a bible class amazing students uh, uh, the students lives are changed and all that she speaks about scriptures and her own life example of how messed up her life was and how the scriptures have changed her life. Can we just close our eyes? Can you tell yourself, O oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Teach, me teach me to repent. To repent. Lord, teach me Lord, teach me to overcome, to overcome. every evil, every every evil. evil. with good. With today, today, you showed me, you showed me in 2 Corinthians, in two Corinthians uh, sorry, 1 Corinthians 2, 10, 1 Corinthians 2, 10, that if I do not forgive, I do not forgive Satan, Satan is able to take advantage, able to take advantage and get me into the trap. I have been ignorant of this device of this device of the devil of the devil but today lord but today lord you have opened my eyes you have opened my eyes it is i with my own choice it is i with my own choice become a prisoner become a prisoner in the hands of satan in the hands of satan thank you for the testimony thank you for the testimony of that precious sister who had extreme anger, who had extreme anger no self-control no self but would react so quickly but, but, react so quickly. but the moment she understood the truth, 
but the moment, moment she understood the truth, she made a strong decision. She made a strong decision that I shall not react. That I shall not react. But, but overcome every evil. Overcome every evil. Every snare, every snare of Satan, of Satan, I will overcome. I will overcome with good. With good. That means, that means no matter what, no matter what, what, I will love my enemies. I will love my enemies. I do good to those who hate me. I do good to those who hate me. I bless those who curse me. I bless those who curse me. I pray for those who persecute me. I pray for those who persecute me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, truly from my heart, truly from my heart, I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive everyone, everyone unconditionally. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for showing me that David. When he was challenged by his elder brother, when he was by his elder brother did not get into argument, did not, get into argument did, not try to justify, did not try to justify, did not try to prove himself, did not try to prove himself, but turned himself away from <coughs> the argument. He, he did not get involved in the snare. He did not short circuit the anointing by unforgiveness. He did not short circuit the anointing by unforgiveness. But stayed connected to the anointing. But stayed connected to the anointing. Through love. Through love. In the same way, Lord. In the same way, Lord. Thank you for opening my mind. Thank you for opening my eyes. My eyes. That I will be extremely vigilant. That I will be extremely vigilant. Especially. Especially. especially when I go through false accusation, when I go through false accusation, that I will overcome, that I will overcome every evil with good. Every evil with good. I'll continue to walk in love. I'll continue to walk in love. And forgive. And forgive. And release those who come against me. And release those who come against me. I thank you and I praise you. I thank you and I praise you. For teaching me the truth. And I declare, right now, in the name of Jesus, I forgive everyone, unconditional. I bless them, and I release them free. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Praise God. So when we go and come back, we'll go deeper into the topic of forgiveness. Yeah. So what line did you give when you when you mentioned so this is based on the Bible? Yeah. What was that line? I overcome every evil with good. When we come back I'll put that scripture off.